morning everybody in today's video we're going to be covering building a Microsoft 2012 virtual machine template and before we get into the nuts and bolts on this I wanted to go over a couple high-level reasons as to exactly why you would want to use a VM template to begin with well initially having templates will automate your deployment process and what I mean by that is that instead of having to go through the initial server setup and deployment of uh, going ahead and entering in your activation keys, uh, putting in updates, uh, et cetera, et cetera, th having a template on hand will save you hours for every server that you need to deploy. Uh, it also allows for standardization across the VMs. What you'll find, at least in my case, is that you'll have you'll want to have several particular applications that are installed uh, on every virtual machine. I like to have things like Wireshark and uh, uh, InMap tools, and, uh, and 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 also the vSphere client. I like to have these devices across the board. So when you're using a template, if you go ahead and just set up these applications running on this template beforehand. I mean, God, you'll save so much time and you'll always know whenever you remote into one of these templates or rather one of these uh, virtual machines that your software is already going to be there and it's already going to be installed. You don't need to download the binaries and run through that process. It just makes your life so much easier. Uh, so some of the requirements that you'll need, you'll need a vSphere infrastructure and we'll go ahead and create another video in the future on making this work with VMware Workstation or uh, VMware Fusion, which are just fat clients that sit on an already uh, installed operating system. But for right now, uh, this video is going to cover the vSphere infrastructure. Uh, you'll also need Microsoft Server 2012 R2 ISO file. Uh, if you don't know how to get this, you can purchase it from Microsoft uh, directly. Um, Google can also be your friend. So a real quick high level process overview, what we'll be doing is um, initially we'll be configuring the BIOS on the VM to make sure that it boots up with the parameters that we like. Uh, there's, there's certain things that we'll want to take out. Uh, we'll then move forward with the installation of Server 2012 R2. Uh, then we'll go ahead and install the VMware tools, which will, <laughs> which will restore some basic functionality for things like, I don't know, uh, your mouse. Um, and as well as uh, file sharing between uh, your, your virtual machines and your, your hosts on the network. We'll then look at tuning the operating system to really be effective for, for, for cloning and, and deploying of these templates. Uh, Microsoft's done a, a pretty good job since uh, Server 20 or Server, Server 2008 of really kind of um, shying customers away from doing deployments like this uh, for for whatever reason um, so we'll look at things that we can do to get around this and to make sure that every deployment that you have is highly effective uh, then we'll begin uh, installation of basic software services uh, again the things that i talked about um, things like uh, wireshark 7-zip uh, nobad plus plus uh, all the goodies that i want right across the board. Uh, finally, we'll look at taking the template that we've made or the, the, the virtual machine and converting it into a template. And then we'll show you the deployment process. All right, so let's get started. So here we are in the vSphere web client. Our first task is to create our initial virtual machine that we'll be using as a template. So we go to actions and new virtual machine. We're going to create a new virtual machine. We're going to assign a name, something that sticks out. That's fine enough. Make sure you select the data center. I only have one. Then you're going to select which host it's going to reside on. I'm picking my Mac mini here. And the data store. I only have one right now. Compatibility, 
And as far as the guest OS, we'll go ahead and bump him up to 2012 64-bit. Going to go ahead and keep, actually, I'm going to keep the resources really slim on this guy. I'm going to take the RAM, that's good. Hard disk is good. All these things can be changed at a later time. And that looks good. Let's go ahead and uh, click next. All right, finish. Now that our template has been created, what we'll need to do is we'll need to change a couple parameters before firing it up. We'll need to attach the data store ISO of the 2012 server. We'll need to tell VMware to force the BIOS mode whenever we boot it up. And we'll also need to disable logging. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll browse down to our template here. And we'll go ahead and hit edit settings. From the CD DVD drive, go ahead and change it to data store ISO file. Now you want to point to wherever the image is. In my case, it's on this SSD. And here it is, derps.iso. And we want to make sure that you connect it. If you don't connect the, the ISO, you're just going to get into a boot loop. From here, we'll go over to the VM options. And we'll drop down on boot options. And we need to check this box right here that says force bio setup. And then we'll need to expand the tree that says advanced and go ahead and uncheck the box that says enable logging. Go ahead and hit okay. And let's get it fired up. Now that the VM is powered on, for us to access it, we're going to hit this launch console button. It'll pop open another tab. And if any of you were born in the 80s, like myself, this screen will look very familiar to you. This is the BIOS. It's not as pretty as it is today. Let's go ahead and make some changes here. We're going to go to the advanced tab, down to the IO device configuration and we want to disable all of this. All right, and go ahead and hit the F10 key. In my case, I'm on a Mac, so I don't have the function keys. I'm just gonna go ahead and hit save changes, yes and exit saving changes. Just because I'm paranoid, I like to save twice. And hit yes. So here we have our Windows Server 2012 setup. Excellent. Go ahead and hit next. And you're going to have to use the tab key to get around on here because uh, the, the mouse is currently broken. <laughs> well, it's not broken, it's just you don't have the VMware tools installed so your console doesn't know how to register your mouse. So make do with what you got. Go ahead and hit your enter key. And on the next page, it's very important that you choose the selection with the GUI. If not, you're just going to get Windows at the command prompt. And uh, from anyone that's ever worked on Windows command prompt, if you're not an expert at it, you're going to find yourself extremely limited. So let's go ahead and hit next and say that you accept the license. And from here, we actually want to select custom. I don't know why upgrade is the default. It's, it's just one of those things with Microsoft. God bless them. And go ahead and create a new partition. Apply, yes. And you'll see it automatically just made one for the master boot record. That's cool. Go ahead and select next and it will begin the process of installation. Okay, now the installation is done. Windows is going to go ahead and restart. You may see it restart several times. That's quite all right.
Now it's prompting you to enter an administrator password. I like to enter something super, super secure, like the word password. All right, finish. Now you may experience a little bit of performance hit and it's not necessarily because of the fact that it's a VM. It actually has to do with the fact that we gave it one processor and four gigs of RAM. The RAM is plenty, but anytime you're giving a 64-bit operating system a single processor, well, you're pretty much just shooting it in the foot. Um, all hyper-threading capabilities are pretty much nullified at that point. So this will take a minute. Here we are. Now you can't just go ahead and enter Control Alt Delete on your computer on your keyboard. That's a bad idea. Instead, go ahead and click this button right here and enter your password. Pass. Where are you at? Pass. There. Password. Very good. Okay, our next task is to go ahead and proceed with the installation of VMware tools. This is um, this is a necessity because it'll bring back much needed functionality like our our mouse and shared folders and all those goodies. So go ahead and expand your ASX host and select your template. And you're presented with a nice alert here that says VMware tools is not installed. Go ahead and click the install, and it's going to let you know that it's not actually installing the binaries for you. It's rather just mounting an ISO for you to uh, proceed with the installation through the operating system. Go ahead and hit mount. All right, and let's go ahead and launch the console. Play a really good game of Tab Monkey. Let's go here. Just keep on using your Tab key until you can get the item selected. Here we are. Now this is going to require a reboot to your system after it's installed, but there's nothing running on here, so there's no big deal. Let's go ahead and proceed with the shutdown. All right, look at that. We already got our mouse back. Isn't that beautiful? Now let's start. Oh, there we go. Password. Let's go ahead and start performing some tweaks on our system. The very first one I like to do is this right here. This is our server manager dashboard, and it's a little bit different if you're coming from Windows 2008. And it, it actually has a lot of really good functionality. Microsoft did an excellent job with this, but you know, you'll find yourself doing some administrative tasks through the old style. So this is automatically already uh, pinned to your taskbar. We don't need this to start up every time. So let's go ahead and tell this do not start service manager automatically at login. That'll save us an extra click every time we boot up. All right, let's go ahead and load him back up and point to our local server. Let's go ahead and disable the firewall. 
because network engineers do a great job with their firewalls. You don't need a Windows firewall. It's just going to provide headache and frustration. A remote desktop, you always want to enable this guy. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and enable him. Let's come over to the advanced tab and play with the performance options. Go ahead and change it to say adjust for best performance. And let's change the paging. So we want to have a larger size for uh, paged memory. So let's say initial size would be 2048 and maximum size is 4096. Now this is also going to require a reboot. So just be ready for that. Yeah. So also, um, you know, I, I've noticed this within the web client after you have the VMware tools installed, sometimes you'll lose your mouse functionality. And by sometimes, I mean anytime that you're working in the operating system and you have to enter text, you'll notice that your mouse disappears. Uh, this is why enabling remote desktops really going to save us because as soon as we do our reboot here we can go ahead and RDP into there and we won't have this issue. But if you have the issue of wherever you you enter text and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about right here. Let's say we start typing some stuff in. We say uh, C drive. Yeah, it's not a valid path. They didn't care about it. But look, we lost our mouse. I know you can't see me moving my finger around on the mouse pad, but trust me, we lost it. So the way that I always get my mouse back is I push my mouse all the way to the very top. And then I click back on my operating system, and then I click back down, and then my mouse magically appears again. So it's just a little quirk. Um, let's go ahead and restart the system. You can do that by right-clicking or double-clicking if you're on Mac, and just go to shut down or sign out and just say restart. And yes, thank you. <laughs> okay, so our next step is to do some tweaking and some updating on our operating system. From here on out, I'm actually just going to use RDP because um, you know the the vSphere web client can be kind of buggy when accessing that host, as you saw. So let's go ahead and well, first of all, take note of the IP address of the host. In my case, it's 10.01.153. And let's go ahead and create a new host here for RDP. And it'll ask you if you want to accept the security certificate. Let's go ahead and hit yes. And let's say administrator and password. Beautiful, okay. So here we are back in the system. Let's go ahead and go through our server manager. And let's go ahead and turn on updates. Now this will go ahead and reach out to Microsoft servers, look for all the updates available, and then we'll select which ones uh, were keen on installing and we'll go ahead and initiate that and just because I like to dual task while that's running in the background I'll go ahead and start adding some roles and features to this guy I'll close him down so we can get both on oops okay and we're gonna go ahead and select our server We'll skip all the goodies for right now. This is just a, a template. But what I do want on the next page for features is I want the .NET framework installed. And let's see what else do I want here. Client for NFS. All kinds of goodies. I like installing the SNMP service. And I also like having a Telnet client and a Telnet server and a TFTP client. This is kind of um, something that I like to have installed on all of my host for troubleshooting purposes. Go ahead and hit next and install. 
And let's come back over to our updates and see what they found. They found nothing so far. All right, I'll just sit here and wait. Okay, so it looks like my features have been added. The SNMP service, the tools, talent client, talent server, TFTP clean client. And over on the Windows update, they've gone ahead and detected what they need. Let's go ahead and click it. I like to just go ahead and select all, even these optional ones. Go ahead and fire away. Oh, excellent. All right, now that the update is done, let's go ahead and restart the system. All right, coming back over to our setups and tweaks. Here we go. Let's go about these guys. Okay, so next let's tweak a little bit more. Let's come back over to our local server and let's turn off the IE enhanced security configuration because it is annoying. Pretty much prohibits you from accessing anything on the internet through an internet browser. It's just not worth our time. Uh, let's play with the network configuration. Let's turn off a couple features that we just don't need. Let's turn off uh, the cost packet schedule. And one of the biggest failures, in my opinion, IPv6. Technology is not a failure. It's the adoption that has just been awful. There's no backwards compatibility. And I don't even talk about IPv6 to 4 tunnels or anything like that. It's just, it's a failure. I mean, it's... It's been around for almost 20 years, and it's got less than 2% of the total internet. So, I'm sorry. I'm just getting off on rant. Okay, let's also turn off hibernation. So, in order to do this, let's uh, right-click on our home button here. And go to command prompt admin. And type in a nice little config. It says power cfg for config, dash h for hibernation, and off for off. Excellent. Now let's go ahead and disable indexing of our C drive. Do that by right clicking on and go down to properties. And there is an option here that we want to uncheck. Let's hit apply. Awesome. Uh, apply to all sub chains. There we go. And I need administrator access. And of course, Windows has problems. My access is denied. Okay, that's fine. Uh, that's uh, just some other gibberish. Okay, next up, we're going to go ahead and defragment the drive. It's actually done from the same window underneath the Tools tab. Go ahead and select Optimize. And click Optimize. Now, in my case, I get an alert that says optimization is not available. And it's likely because of the fact that I'm running on an SSD. And you should never really defrag an SSD. There's just really no reason for it. And I wish I had better reasons for it. Uh, I know that your SSD has limited read writes uh, and running a defrag on it. Uh, first of all, will not help the performance because you can't really get better than the SSD right out the box. And also, the running a defrag will um, generate an incredible amount of read writes on your drive. So there's really no need for it. But if you're using an uh, older um, RPM-based hard drive, uh, then go ahead and run this. And let's change the settings. And I'm just going to tell it to not run. That's fine. Excellent. Now, I also like to change the UAC. There we are. This just <clears throat> will prevent Windows from alerting me whenever I'm trying to do something that requires administrator access. Again, we know what we're doing, people. Uh, let's go ahead and close this out. And just like everything in Windows, we need to give it a reboot. Just gonna give it there we are. Excellent. Now that we've rebooted, we're ready for the final app. And that is gonna be installing all of our goodies. 
Now, here's a list of the software that I like to install. Uh, this auto runs is um, it's really good at giving you an indication of what processes and services uh, are initialized whenever your computer boots up. BG Info puts a nice background on your wallpaper that gives you customizable information about your service, about your server rather. Uh, you can put anything from host name, IP address, uh, packets coming inside of your NIC, uh, CPU utilization, RAM, hard disk, I mean, anything that you might want to geek out over, uh, you can go ahead and actually put that on a back uh, pane right here. Uh, let's see. We also have some really cool ones. Um, these are just basic monitoring tools like Process Explorer. It's kind of like an enhanced version of your task manager. 7-Zip, this is an absolute necessity. Uh, Google Chrome, uh, Foxit Reader for your PDFs, Notepad++ is another necessity. Putty, uh, QNAP, uh, well, you probably won't need this. This is for my NAS appliance. The TFTP service, this is a little bit different than the actual application. This will actually have TFTP service running on your computer. Uh, we have the VMware client plugin in case I'm remote desktop into my PC from outside and I want to access my administration pane of the VM vSphere client. Also the FAT client for VMware. This is a VNC so I can hop over into my Linux distros that don't have XRDP installed or maybe onto my Macs. WinSCP, this is a absolute necessity for me. It does secure copying over SSH and Wireshark, there's never an install that goes on my, in my, any system in my network that does not have Wireshark installed on it. So I'm gonna go ahead and run through this and I'll pause the video to save you the pain of watching. All right, as you can see, I've already got all my software installed. We are now ready to finally make this into a template. Let's clear out the recycling bin. And, oh, oh um, I guess this needs explanation. This is this is Fred. He is um, a red tail hawk. He's blind. My girlfriend is a falconer, and she specializes in rehabilitation. Fred over here is working on his deadlifts. As you can see, he's got uh, some rubber plates, and he is uh, he's getting it done. Let me actually go to our page here. Here we go. Okay. So what we want to do is we want to unmount our VMware installation tools. Let's go ahead and looks like I need to reload my vSphere. It's been a while since I've logged on. There we go. Back to our template. And let's disconnect. Make sure that we've disconnected in here too. Oh, here we go. Derp, derp, derp. There we are. Okay, excellent. Now, after that's been done, let's go ahead and do a little bit of cleanup work. So, in order to do this, we're going to again run through the command prompt admin and run into this command dism slash online cleanup image start component cleanup reset base very cool stuff all right I'm gonna let this go for a minute okay excellent now that that is finally completed we're going to run a small little program called defprof, and let me show you what that looks like. D-E-F-P-R-O-F, and you can find it at this website. And this is going to allow us to go ahead and default the profile. And so let's browse to it. users, and then 
administrator downloads def pop. All right. Now the command syntax to get this done is def prof and then the username. In this case, that is administrator. And we'll say that we will recommendations to be logged off and say yes. And then say yes again. And that's it. Now we can finally shut down the host. And that is the last we will be tweaking out of the template. Congratulations. Let's come back over and make sure the ferrets are okay. Ferrets are okay. Let's find our web page. Here we go. All right. <clears throat> Let's validate that the system is now shut down. And our very last step is to go to the actions and say convert to temp. I'm going to call this 2012 R2 template. Pick the host, pick the data store. I'm going to put it on the fat one. No need for the template to reside on an SSD. And finish. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. This whole process is quite laborious. It takes about an hour, maybe even more. But you know, every time that you need to deploy a 2012 server from here on out, you'll already have one done and it'll already have all the goodies all the updates, the activation taken care of, all of your favorite applications, your settings, I mean, you're ready to go. Whether or not you wanna spin up some IIS web servers, if you wanna spin up uh, FTP servers, if you wanna set up Active Directory servers, anything that you can possibly think of, you're already about, I don't know, what'd you say, 10 to 15 steps ahead the whole process saving you hours each time so I'm gonna go ahead and let this clone and then I'll show you how to deploy it and then we'll call it a day excellent now that the template is done we're going to browse to VMs and templates in your vSphere web client expand your data center and you'll see a big difference in between what a typical virtual machine looks like and the template the template has just kind of like a blank slate sheet of paper as an icon. Well, again, this is set up with networkingforums.com. Thanks for your patience in watching this, and I hope that it has helped you in saving a lot of time and stress. And, and um, if you have any questions, feel free to give us a contact at networking-forums.com. Thanks again.